everyone, this is Rob from Access. We're here in Nasu, Japan for a world first hands-on with Metal Gear Solid V Ground Zeroes. And I'm joined today by two men who really need no introduction, but I'm going to give them one anyway. This is Hideo Kojima and Yoji Shinkawa from Konami. Hello. And my first question for you, Kojima-san, is why did you feel that Metal Gear Solid V needed a prologue? I mean, you said that the gameplay is, is drastically different to previous Metal Gear games. Why did you decide to, to really shake it up for this fifth installment? Over 20 years ago, when I originally came up with the idea of Metal Gear, I wanted to make a real simulation of a stealth game. The hardware now allows me to do this. I wanted to make an open world strategy game where you build up your own strategy when it comes to stealth and infiltration. People who are used to the linear games we've been making so far are going to see a big change with Metal Gear Solid V. So we made Camp Omega in Ground Zeroes where people will be able to learn how to play through these open world environments. The main game, The Phantom Pain, will be over 200 times bigger than Camp Omega. So people will be able to take what they've learned in Ground Zeroes and make it come to fruition in The Phantom Pain. The Phantom Pain is so big though, it would have been impossible to get it ready in time for when the PS4 launched. So many people wanted to see the game however, so I wanted to show everyone what we were creating, even if it was just a prologue. More than a strategic move, it's just something I really wanted to do. Fantastic. A question for Shinkawa-san. Um, PS4 obviously you've got characters with far more detail in them now. I was just wondering, has that changed how you will have to approach uh, your character design? And what are the challenges of designing characters on PS4 as opposed to previous generations? The concept design of the characters hasn't changed much because what we're doing is pretty much the same. We think of a character, we think what kind of background this character will have, what kind of impact they will have on the Metal Gear world. So that hasn't changed too much. What has changed is a process of creating that character. Before we would create them by hand, and now it's become a far more mathematical process. It's a big difference compared to what we've done so far. What's changed the most with the new generation is the amount of information we're able to convey to the player. We're able to convey more clearly whether the character is feeling pain, whether they're feeling anger, whether they're upset. We can convey far more of this information to the player. Fantastic. A question for both of you. Um, what is your favorite character design of Shinkawa Sans and which one has caused you to have the most arguments? We don't have many arguments, but when I asked Shinkawa san to design the cyborg ninja, he came up with something completely different. It surprised me and I liked it a lot. That character would have been very different if it wasn't for Shinkawa san. He's a very popular character, so I'm very happy with the way he came out. Same for me. When I started working on Metal Gear, the first characters I created were Solid Snake and Cyborg Ninja, so I have very fond memories of those two characters. And uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, the PlayStation-specific DLC, uh, the, the Deja Vu mission? What can you tell us about that? Well, the Metal Gear series became popular all over the world when it first appeared on PlayStation. That's when it went global. It's been over 15 years since then, and getting feedback from PlayStation gamers has helped shape what Metal Gear is today. So I want to say thanks to the fans of Metal Gear, and I want to express that thanks with the Deja Vu mission. It's an homage to 15 years of Metal Gear. Through this mission, there may be elements that people remember from the series past. I believe we've made it in a way that will make people want to go back to Metal Gear Solid 1 and replay it. Fantastic. And a, a, a question for both of you again. Um, when I was playing the game, one thing I noticed almost instantly was how I was getting spotted a lot more than I was in previous Metal Gear games. There's no, there's no Soliton radar, there's no camouflage this time around. Was it a deliberate decision of yours to make the game more challenging and to make the player have to really analyse the situation before they you know, went in and executed their plan? Since this is an open world game, I wanted to have more freedom. And in that regard, one thing I wanted to make clear to the players was don't be spotted. It's dangerous when you get spotted. With linear games, the game designer traces a route and players solve the route like a puzzle. I wanted to make something different where the player steps outside what the game designer thought of. 
とは違う、えー、自分でルートを戦略的に選ぶ。There might be a route that is very far away but very easy. Without going into specifics, we want people to understand that in Metal Gear Solid 5, you'll have different items and equipment that will allow you to do many more things. In Ground Zeroes, I wanted to make the basics clear to players. I didn't want to make it more challenging, but I did want to communicate to the players that if they play the same way they've played in previous Metal Gear games, they will face challenges. However, if they take advantage of the freedom that is allowed in the game, take different routes, think outside of what the game designers have thought, then they might find they can progress much easier. So, it's going to be more and more and more and more. We tried to create a game where if 10 people played it, you would come out with 10 different ways of reaching your objective. To rescue Chico or Paz, there might be some people who dash all the way through the camp, some people who take several hours, slowly going through, crouching constantly. That's what we wanted to achieve with Ground Zeroes to make players take their time and think, how am I going to do this? Because that's when I think the game is the most fun. For the Phantom Pain, you'll have to think about extra elements like time of day and changing weather conditions, so that will make a big difference. Certain places that are being guarded won't be the same if you go in the afternoon or at night, for example. If you go at night, there won't be as many enemies, but then you'll have limited information sources and bad visibility. At that point, the infiltration will be very different. If 100 people play it, there will be 100 different strategies. I think that's the most important element for this game. And my final question then, and perhaps most important of all, are we going to see Raiden in the game? No. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you very much, Kojima san and Shinkawa san, for talking to us. That is Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zero is coming to PS3 and PS4 on March 20th. For more videos for everything PlayStation, make sure you subscribe. <laughs>